All right, this is first grade, module four, lesson eight. And in this lesson, students are gonna be comparing quantities. In, particularly, uh, in particular, we're gonna be really going to that, kind of like that standard technique of comparing our numbers from left to right. And the idea is at this point, it, it makes sense for students to, to think of it this way because they're developing an understanding of place value. In contrast with the old way of a teacher saying, well, the way you compare two numbers is you go left to right, kind of like alphabetical. And that really removes any sense of uh, developing numeracy inside the students' brains. And so this is now the time where we're ready to teach kids how to look at the numbers left to right because they have an understanding of place value. So let's get started on that. So we're going to begin uh, by just looking at these two numbers. So uh, we've got 13 here and we've got 23. And parents and teachers, remember, for us, this is kind of intuitive, but for first graders, not so much. So the idea is let's first model these two numbers, all right? So I'm going to model 13 using quick tens. So here's my 10. And then, oh, let's do 1, 2, 3. So there's my quick 10 for 13. Let's do a quick 10 for 23. So it's got 10, 20, and then 1, 2, 3. And then so there's my 23. And now what we can do is we could say, well, which one is greater? And we can see that, well, you know, since this guy has two sets of 10s and this guy only has one set of 10, that makes this guy greater and that makes this guy lesser, even though they also have these extra three dots on something. You know, if you think about it, these three dots, they're tied. But then here, this guy only has one quick 10, while this guy, 23, has two 10s. So we could say that this guy is greater than, than, and then we can say this guy is less than. All right. So parents and teachers were also starting to throw in some important vocabulary, particularly for your English language learners. Uh, I'd love for you parents and teachers to be creating a vocabulary wall so that your kids can refer to these very important uh, math words. Now, let's say we've got these numbers over here. So we've got 29, we've got 38, 7, 14, and 24. And we want to sort them in order from least to greatest. So the idea, parents and teachers, is we want to start with um, the beginnings of a number line. It doesn't have to be all perfect. It doesn't have to be official. Uh, but we can start with the general number line and say, well, here's 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. And, and we could stop right there. And then the idea is you can take your number and as we march along this number line, we can ask our students, where does 29 go? And I like to take my number and I go, ching, 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 ching. I, like, I make train noises and I go, chugga, 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 chugga. And I tell the kids to say stop when I've reached close enough. And they, they, you know, start to yell stop right around here. Sometimes they'll say stop down here. But I'll keep going and they'll say stop. And I like to goof around and keep going. And the kids are going like, no, go back, go back. And I'll say, okay. And then they'll say, stop. And there, there we go. We've labeled where we've roughly placed 29 where it goes. Now let's do the same thing with 38. And we'll understand that 38 is somewhere up here. As long as they understand it's somewhere between 30 and 40, we're okay. Slightly closer to 40 is preferred. Where is 7? Oh my goodness, 7 is way back here because we don't even have a, a set of 10 yet. 14, well that's a 10 plus 4 more. And 24 is 2 10s plus 4 more, but it's less than 29 because 29 is 2 10s and 9 more. So I'll kind of squeeze in 24 right here-ish. <laughs> and now we've just identified the number, the numbers in order from least to greatest because we want students to recognize that when we place our numbers on a number line that automatically tells us the the 
the order uh, from least to greatest or from greatest to least. We're going to use quick tens uh, to draw each of the numbers and then we're going to use this word bank over here to complete the state the sentence right so here's 15 and then we have 1 10 and 5 1 so first well let's do the quick tens for this one cuz this one is the easiest cuz it kind of tells you what your quick 10 is going to look like it's going to be a 10 and 5 ones there there's our quick 10 now interestingly enough uh, this guy is going to end up looking the exact same thing. We have one ten and five ones. So how do these two numbers compare? Is one greater than? Is one less than? Or are they equal? And we can see, oh, they are equal. So we're going to put is equal to... So we've got 15 is equal to 110 and 5 ones. And that's hopefully this will not be much of a surprise to our students. Let's go down to F. So we've got 23 and 33. So 23, quick 10, quick tens and three ones. So we've got two tens and three ones. For 33, we're going to have three tens. And three ones. And I'm kind of paying attention to a convention that we don't have to follow, but the two tens I put first, the three ones I put second, the three tens I put first, and the three ones I put second. Because of the commutative property, we can reverse these if we wanted, but I'm going to follow convention and I'm going to uh, do it that way. I write in the conventional order. But now we can see that. This only has two tens, while this has three tens, so automatically 33 is greater than 23. But we need to write it in a sentence form down here with this sentence frame, so we're going to put 23 is less than 33. Parents and teachers, if you want, you can certainly swap that around and allow your students to choose another phrase from the word bank and fill it in there. They don't have to. That's kind of like your Dwayne Hobbecker bonus. And this is going to re kind of review a previous slide that I did where if we've got these four numbers and we want to put them in order from least to greatest, it's going to help us if we think of those numbers on a number line. And I'm going to say we've got 10... I mean, zero, then let's do 10, 20, 30, and 40. And really, we could see that since my lowest number is in the 20s, I really could have just done this much, but that's all right. So now, where are we going to put 32? All right, well, 32 is going to live somewhere up here in this range between 30 and 40. So I'm going to kind of put it down here closer to 30. Now let's do 23. So where does 23 live? Well, is it going to live down here? No. How about here? No. Is it going to live somewhere in here? Yep. And oh, let's put it right around there. That's good enough. Kind of lift it up a little bit. All right, so now we have, let's see, 29. Where is 29 going to be? Well, we want students to know that it's almost 30, but not quite. So it's going to live on this side, less than 30, not more than 30. And that makes sense because, look, we've got 23 and 29, and that's showing us the right order, right? That 23 is less than 29. So that's looking good so far. And then the last number, 30. Where is 30 going to go? And we can see, oh, 30, boom, right there. It's perfect. Now this list right here gives us these numbers in order. 
So we see that 23 is the least, followed by 29, followed by 30, followed by 32. So parents and teachers, we want to resist the urge to just kind of jump to some sort of algorithm for how to identify numbers from least to greatest. Like a lot of times we go, well, just look at the tens place first and then let's look at the ones place to break the ties. No, 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 no. Have our students place these numbers on a number line or some similar thing and then that number line is going to immediately tell us the order from least to greatest. This, this way students are placing the numbers from least to greatest but they're doing it by developing number sense rather than just blindly following a rule. Now the last thing is where would 27 go in this list? And well, we know that 27, and I have to make it a little bit smaller here. Let's go 27. Make 27 smaller. Come on. Can I shrink 27? No. Oh, I know how to shrink 27. There. Now I'm going to shrink 27. There. I'm going to shrink 27. And then let's get back. Now where is 27 going to live? Well, if we go up here to our number line, where would 27 go? And we can see that 27 should fit somewhere between 23 and 29, so that means 27 will go somewhere right here, in between 23 and 29. And that wraps up a very interesting one, using number lines to help us compare quantities as we look at those numbers from the left digit to the right digit, you know, the tens place. Then we're looking at the ones place in order to compare numbers. So that's lesson eight.